Okay, so today we're going to cover the topic of wave superpositioning, which is also called interference. And at the top, we have a wave that is interfering with another wave. Uh, this would be considered constructive interference. And essentially what happens is when these wave pulses meet, okay, the algebraic sum of the two wave pulses equals the new wave as they're passing over each other, okay? Sorry about the quality of that picture. Hopefully you can kind of get what, uh, what we're after there. Um, this is a fairly, you know, simple topic. Um, but what ends up happening is you end up getting asked questions about what happens in situations where the wave shape is not a simple uh, rounded top, okay? Um, so let's just write a couple of notes here. The... Uh, Actually, let's start that again. When two waves meet <laughs> in a medium, um, the result, the resultant actually, resultant wave is the algebraic sum. of the two incident waves. All right, um, we'll clarify that in just a second here. Um, when the sum of the waves results in a wave with a larger amplitude, we call that constructive interference, okay? So constructive interference happens when the resultant wave has a larger amplitude than the input waves. Okay? And this, of course, will happen when both waves are on the same side of the medium, okay? It does. And this is destructive interference. That's what the, the little animation up at the top was, was showing. Okay, that's a, an example of constructive interference. Okay, so let's look at some, let's look at some destructive interference. Okay, so over here we have interference, but this interference is doing the opposite of what the last one did. So you'll notice the sum of these two waves, and it's a little bit hard to see, but right in the center right now is a flat line, right? These amplitudes exactly cancel one another out. And then the energy pulse continues on afterwards. So this is destructive. Yes, interference. Well, we'll we'll practice drawing them. Okay. Um, obviously with a you know with an animation we can see the the action all the way through. Um, in real life, what you would probably do is you would draw a time sequence of events, okay, and you would show what happens at the central event when those two waves are interfering as they do, okay? So destructive interference, um, the resultant uh, wave has a lower amplitude than the input. Go. Okay, so you might uh, be asked to do something like this. That's not what I want you to do. I want you to do this right here, please. Okay, that's fine. 
So it's possible that you're going to get questions where you're asked to show result waves that are meeting um, in a medium. And something that I want to demonstrate here is uh, just, just work for me, okay? This is exactly why we have graph papers being drawn. But for some strange reason, it does not want to just cooperate. It wants to be difficult. Okay, there we go. Perfect. I'm happy. So what is this is meant to represent is one wave traveling this way and another wave traveling this way. And you might be asked to say, show what will happen when these two waves exactly overlap one another. Well, no, not really, because remember, the resultant wave is the algebraic sum of the other two waves. Okay? So if you look, this could be considered to be plus one because it's above the neutral position of the medium. And this could be considered to be minus two. So you want the sum of those two. So essentially what you're saying is one plus negative two, and that should result in a new wave equal to negative one. So what you'll end up with when you draw this during this overlap um, scenario is you will get this going on. Uh, so we'll have this. Um, actually, the way I've drawn it, if these are moving one square at a time, they can't really ever overlap exactly. But uh, sort of besides the point, what you'd end up with and what you'd want to draw on your test paper is that the resultant wave would be like that. So why would it be like that? Well, the input waves to this were this, or this, and this down here. And the sum of those is this. So something that helps me think about these, because sometimes they get a bit tricky, and I'll show you a slightly trickier one next, is imagine that this is moving along, and then it falls into a hole that's two steps deep. Well, the top of it would be like right here. Do you see what I'm saying? It's as if this is moving along and it fell in a hole. Okay? And there's the top of it. Okay? If that makes sense, try this. Okay. So, sorry I missed a little bit there, but essentially the idea is if we have a wave that looks like this, which is unlikely, but you might get asked this type of question, and you have a wave that looks like this, you might say this represents the starting condition of t equals zero and if the waves travel at one space per second what will this picture look like when time equals one second so one second after that so look what happens this moves to here this moves to here and then we'll say and then also add at t equals two seconds as well okay so we're going to be asked to draw out what's going on one second from now Right? So if this moves one like this and this moves one like that, we should get something that looks like... Okay, so what we've done is we've now moved this over and moved it over. And now one second later, uh, they'll be exactly overlapped. But let's, instead of doing that, let's be even trickier to challenge you even more. Let's see what happens half a second later. So at 1.5 seconds. And then we can do two seconds after. Okay, so let's do... 1.5 seconds, and then at 2 seconds. So in half a second, it's as if this is moved to here, right? And this is moved to here. All right, so in other words, um, in other words, what does that mean? It's as if, it's the same concept as if this has moved one square and this hasn't moved, right? Does that make sense to you? If they each move half a square, then that should be the equivalent of one of these moving one whole square. And what it'll be like, it'll be like as if half of this wave fell into this hole over here. So I'm not going to draw it exactly where it would be because I don't like drawing halfway across one of these. So I'm just going to do it as if this moved one whole square because we're more interested in where this is. I should have been a little more careful when I, when I lined these up to begin with, but uh, just bear with me. So what I'm going to do 
So I'm going to very lightly sketch it. Now, on your paper, I kind of have this cool tool that does it for me, but on your paper, um, what you'll essentially be dealing with is, uh, is uh, probably doing this in pencil uh, so you can erase what you've done. And if you look, okay, what you'll be left with is if you draw these two things together, okay, like this, this is not the final answer, obviously, right? So what we're interested in is what happens during this particular overlap, okay? And to be honest, the easiest way that I've found to think about this is imagine that this is falling into a hole. Well, if it falls into a hole, what's going to happen is this will come down like that. This will come down. Oh, dear. Not the right thing. This will come down like that, okay? Now we have to do some erasing. This goes, uh, this goes away. This goes away. And now we can cover this over with what we're actually after, which is our new wave. It's a little weird, but that's kind of the best way to do it. So you end up with this. Scenario right here. Okay. So yeah, so the it's maybe not quite exactly intuitive that that's what it should look like, but I think thinking about it like falling into a hole, though it sounds funny, it makes it a little more, I think, easy to deal with. Okay, and then we ask what it looks like at two seconds. Um, so uh, where would we be then? Um, so to kind of work out where it is at two seconds, this is what I would do, okay? I would say this has moved one, two spaces, okay? This has moved one, two spaces. So this will be over here, and this one will be over there. So essentially at two seconds, um, they will have passed each other. Uh... Yeah, so we moved it, so they moved one each, that got us to there, then we moved another another one, yeah, so like half more each. Um, when would they be exactly over top of each other? Oh yeah, two seconds, so I didn't do that quite right, did I? Okay, because that's the front right and that's the back. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, right. So, at two seconds, is as if this has moved four, right? That's probably a better way to think about it. Instead of trying to do one each, just say, okay, it's the same as if this stayed still and I moved one, two, three, four. So, it's right over top of that one. Okay, so let's pause for a sec and we'll draw that in. So, so here's, your, uh, here's your light sketch. Here's your sketch that uh, shows how these would line up, which is very handy to do. Um, especially when you get to more difficult ones. And then once you've done that, okay, you can start to come in here and picture what's happening. So it's as if this has fallen in a hole. So we've got a plus one with a minus one. So that's just like cancels out, right? These cancel out. This block cancels that block out. So what you're left with is your last triangle like that. Okay. And you lay them in. And then you erase your construction lines. Get up here, go away, get rid of them. Ugh. Perfect. And there you go. Okay, so this is when they're exactly overlapping. And then, of course, um, if you wanted to push it to the next level, what would end up happening is they would just continue right past each other, and you'd end up with your kind of this scenario after they've passed along the way. And I'm just kind of doing this real quick. Uh, yeah, don't worry about T equals. It's maybe T equals like, I don't know, three? Yeah, say three. 
Actually, by t equals 3, I think there'd be two spaces between them. But that's kind of what's going on. So they meet, they interfere with each other, and they pass on. Okay? So this idea here is called superpositioning. All right? So it's essentially when the waves are positioned on top of each other. And look, I'm doing it in dotted lines. Yeah. I wish it weren't like that. There. Superpositioning. Okay? Uh, so the waves are superpositioned on top of each other, one on top of the other. Okay? The general concept is called interference, and this you would call probably destructive interference, although it's not total destructive interference. Uh, the amplitude is lower. Okay? And we're done.